Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Today, we're going to be taking a look at some more nutty and egregious eating from my 600 pound life. What sort of unhinged eating will we see today? Pizza, nachos, french fries? Stick around to find out. Before we proceed, please click the like button so that I may apply comb to mustache. The food made me happy and that just wasn't gonna change. Food made me happy and that just wasn't gonna change. I couldn't go back, so I kept eating and I kept gaining. I couldn't go back, so I kept eating and I kept gaining. So you got to a certain size of largeness and you're like, I can't go back now, I guess I better keep going. All right, that's weird. I did not know there was a point of no return when it comes to obesity. Once you get past 250, you gotta just keep going. What are you gonna do? This is a very lovely camera angle, thank you. Marla loves to sit in the house surrounded. What was that last camera angle? The camera was down by her foot. What are you guys doing, bro? What is this camera angle, dude? Even look at her, look at the look on her face. She's like, why are you guys filming down there? Yeah, she's got the look on her face like, what are you guys doing down there? I'm up here, dude. Why are you filming my foot down there? What the heck? Are you sure this is TLC and not some other production company? If you want to make F etish content, you go to larger people's houses posing as a producer from TLC. Um, this is for my 600 pound life. Uh, now rub peanut butter all over yourself. Uh, nothing weird. Uh, now if you could just, <laughs> dude, I'm sorry. <laughs> to sit in the house. Yeah, I saw the look on her face. She's like, why are you guys down by my foot? I was surrounded by snacks. Imagine being brave enough to eat a nature valley bar in bed. The what? She ate a nature valley bar in bed. The crumb situation is unruly. It's the crumb situation is unruly. It's not a matter of if she has bugs in her bed. It's a matter of how many. Dude, ugh, you're right, plot twist. You can't eat a nature valley granola bar in bed. That honestly just shows how far you've gone off the rails. Like plot twist said, dude, it's not a matter of if you have bugs in your bed, but how many. Eating a nature valley granola bar, that's that granola bar that's so dry. When you bite into it, it shatters in your mouth and crumbs and dust just doof, fly out all over the freaking room, dude. You have to eat that over like a piece of plastic, like a scene from Dexter's. <laughs> dude, you can't even have one of those inside of my house, okay, at all. Take it outside, bro. You take it to the driveway or the yard, okay? Just opening it could make a mess, right? You know how when you're pulling on that little thing and then sometimes it gives all of a sudden, you're like, oh, crap. And then it just whoosh, goes everywhere. I'm sure we've all done that with a bag of chips. Here's a pro tip. Brace the palms of your hands against each other like this. And then and then you pull the thing. <laughs> the stupid things we talk about on this channel. Do brace your palms against each other like this when you open a bag that's like that. Don't go like this. Mm. Don't take that out of context either. That was weird. I love food. I'm a junk food junkie. You're a junk food junkie. Potato chips and lunch meat up in the front seat. Sorry. She sends her kids out on... Why is everything blurred out? Why do they always do that? Is it like you didn't pay for advertising on TV so we're not gonna let your brand be shown or something? Side quests all day long for boxes and boxes of food. And it looks like she even made... Why does she bring her flowers? <laughs> What's going on here, man? I think you're sending her mixed signals. She's like, so I should lose weight or... Am I the bell of the ball or what's going on here? I don't know. Made them bring her flowers. I swear, if she eats those two, I will seriously lose my will to do this anymore. Plot twist, stop. If she eats those two. Oh, I'm sure, bro. Stop. When I start eating those foods, I can't stop. When I start eating those foods, I can't stop. Do you have a couple of cans of biscuits or mm, breadcrumbs or something? What is in those cans that are leaning up against your leg? Cornstarch? Is it... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Mm. She eats four microwave breakfast sandwiches for her first meal of the day. Four microwave breakfast sandwiches for the first meal of the day, okay. All right, th so this is a very interesting sight. She's laying on a bed full of garbage, basically, with a keyboard in front of her and several breakfast sandwiches. She's over there looking like a typical Discord or Reddit moderator. Her futile efforts to incorporate those gummy multivitamins into her diet is just pointless. Her futile efforts to incorporate those gummy vitamins into her diet. <laughs> is that what was in those bottles by her leg? Just a few minutes in and she's frying chicken right in her bed. 
No, we're not frying chicken in the bed. No, no, we'll get grease all over the pillow. No, God, that's so gross. You know how when you're deep frying something like the, the fumes of the grease coming off of that make you all greasy? You got like a, a layer of grease on your forehead and everything in the freaking room. I bet her whole bedroom is coated in several layers of that grease. That's literally how it works, dude. Whatever room you're deep frying stuff in, go touch the wall. Go like this. Taste it too. Sorry, you don't have to taste it. Was that too far? I'm sorry. Cooking in bed is egregious enough, but to deep fry in bed, oh my God. Slathering honey mustard up and down each piece and wrap up and down each piece. Wrapping it all up in bread. Her condition was wrapping it in bread, man. It's already breaded. So bad that Dr. Now operated on her almost immediately. Okay. All right. Dr. Now operated on her almost immediately. Oh, Dr. Now, it is so good to meet you. Thank God. Hopefully you can help me. This obesity thing has really been taking a toll on my life. We're going to operate immediately. I've never seen that happen before. He's like, I've never seen a case of morbid obesity that was so morbid. We don't have time. Ugh! He just knocks around. He takes a pocket knife out. And he's like, all right, nurse, prepare the anesthesia. Doctor, this is a parking lot of a Denny's. We can't do surgery here. Shut the hell up. I didn't spend eight years in medical school to be told what to do by a Denny's employee that happened to stumble out while I'm in the middle of surgery. Yes, yes, doctor. Sorry. Of course, of course. I'll go drop another sampler platter into the deep fryer. You don't have to have alcohol every day, but you have to have food to live. You don't have to have alcohol every day, but you do have to have food to live. Well, I think an alcoholic would say that they need alcohol every day. You do need food to live, but what a lot of these people are eating is not really food. Real, regular food doesn't give you a high that leaves you wanting more. Since we do need to eat to live, it can be very difficult, but all you need to do is switch from highly processed, highly palatable, addictive food to regular, real food. Simple, home-cooked meals will not leave you constantly hungry and constantly wanting more. Once you stick to an unprocessed diet for long enough, your body will stop craving that stuff. Every day. Can I get a double cheeseburger and fries and a 10-piece chicken nugget? Double cheeseburger, fries, 10-piece chicken nugget. Is that all you're eating? To be 600 pounds. People don't really understand when you have an addiction to food, it's the worst kind of addiction you can have. It's definitely a bad addiction. I don't know if it's the worst one. They're all pretty bad. Alcohol is sold at every single corner store too, so that's a real hard one to quit. Food is definitely a difficult one to quit. So is alcohol and lots of other substances. Things like food and alcohol though are generally available everywhere in our society. So yeah, those are probably the two most difficult. If they sold crack at the corner store, it would be harder to quit. You just got $20 worth of gas. Um, would you like some crack with that? That would be a little harder to resist if I don't have to go seek it out by some dude who looks sketchy as hell on the street corner, right? Yeah, Mrs. Jones, good to see you again. Let me go ahead and ring up your items. Bloop. Bloop. Ah, yes, it is a lovely day. Would you like some crack? Would you like some crack with all of these items today? Crack is whack. Crack is cheap. I don't know why she ever said that. Crack was never cheap. And I have a love-hate relationship with food. I love to eat it, but I hate what it does to me. I love to eat it, but I hate what it does to me. Almost all addictions are based on chasing short-term pleasure while ignoring long-term consequences. This makes me feel good right now. Later, I feel like absolute garbage and it's totally not worth it. But I do feel good for five minutes right now. That's basically the basis of every single addiction, isn't it? Sacrificing long-term success for short-term pleasure. Are right, we gonna eat this in the car, dude? Head to the drive-thru and orders a double cheese. Are we about to do some review bra? A double cheeseburger? Cheeseburger, 10 nuggets, soda, and some french fries. Right, I am not believing that order. Double cheeseburger, soda, french fries, and a 10-piece nugget. I could eat that right now myself, stop. What, you expected a salad? No, but I did expect more, if I'm being real with you, plot twist. 10-piece nuggets, double cheeseburger, french fries, 600 pounds, stop. My mom used to be friends with this larger woman back in the day, and anytime we would go out to eat, she would eat less than anybody else. It was quite a display, um, and that's all it was, was a display, and it didn't fool any of us. Man, you don't need to blur that out. You think I don't know what that is? Hold on. You think I don't know that sour cream right there? Hmm? You, you think blurring that out is going to stop me from knowing that that is sour cream? If that wasn't some daisy sour cream, dude, then I don't know what's going on. Dude, hold on. Hold on. Look at this camera angle. Are you about to not fit between that doorway? Bro. Bro. Dude. What? 
Look at this. Dude. Oh my gosh. Dude. Dude. <laughs> I don't even know what to say, man. What the hell? Is he about to freaking shove her through? Yes, he is about to shove her through. Let's go. My hip is stuck. Oh my god. Dude, you know the cameraman and the producer are just back there high-fiving. They're like, dude, this is the best shot ever. They're just high-fiving like, yes, yes, yes. And they're like, all right, dude, take that shopping cart and try to like shove her through. Like the visual of it is going to... It's gonna be, it's gonna work just so well, dude. Just, just try to shove her right through that door with a shopping cart, please. I have to move this. I've never oh my goodness. She couldn't do it. She had to get off the chair and go through sideways. She was too wide this way to fit through the door. Dude, this is crazy. What is happening? I've never been in a situation. I'm not trying to be mean, but her hips are like flapping like wings, like she's going to take flight like a majestic bird. Or I could not get through the door. You've never been in a situation where you cannot get through the door. Well, you know, uh, we could call this a wake up call. Um, the day when the My 600 Pound Life camera crew showed up to your house could be a wake up call. And then also when the 600 Pound Life camera crew filmed you unable to fit through the door, one could call that a wake up call or Maybe some kind of flag, um, perhaps red. When it's time to leave the house to go grocery shopping, she can't even leave because her butt is too big to get through the door. I mean, just worried about how she's have She's in love my life. I'm like, she's good. Well, she's sitting down to cook in the kitchen, so. And her chef. They gonna eat some hamburger meat tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Still, when she gets home, she gets right to work frying up some burger patties and whipping up a hearty serving size of mashed potatoes. Hey, at least she made it herself. That's a love seat, by the way, not a regular recliner. Um, she just happens to fill out the whole thing. The mashed potatoes. When she's out of breath, wish I can take my breath. And give it to her. Um, well, you could probably help her have more breath by not feeding her any of this stuff. Although, you didn't feed it to her. She made it herself and went and sat down and ate it. You could maybe drop an elbow onto her plate, though, to discourage her a little bit. You can make it look like an accident. This one's a little bit interesting. The dude isn't even making the food for her. But I would recommend that you encourage her to stop eating this way. Listen, hun, I know that you made all that food yourself, but I wish that you wouldn't eat it because it's not doing anything good for you. You used to be able to get up off that love seat without it sticking to your butt. Imagine getting up off of a love seat and it sticks to your butt because you're wedged in there. Imagine not being able to fit through the door at the grocery store. Dude, I hope that was the biggest wake up call ever, dude. Oh my God. Like, all right, this TLC show, My 600 Pound Life, is here to film me being 600 pounds. Hopefully, nothing more embarrassing than normal happens during this time. Cue the most embarrassing scene of your life. Captured on film. Oh, great. If I don't change... Oh, I love the framing of that. He's like, if I could give her my breath, I would. And then the next scene is him grabbing some brownies and taking it to her. Here we are with the good camera angles again. I'm not gonna have a future. And my children are not gonna have me. All right, so we're feeding the little one some brownie and ice cream as well. <laughs> For dessert, her husband hands her a giant piece of chocolate cake after crying that she could die any minute. Yeah, he was crying that she could die any minute. And then he brought her some chocolate cake. I don't know if those two scenes really happened that close together or if they just edited it that way. Since going to the doctor, I've been studying his meal plans and been trying to change my eating habits as best I can. I've been studying his meal plans. Okay, so what is that? Some of that fat-free salad dressing? Get it out of here. I'm gonna disagree with any fat-free anything. I think I've been sticking to it well, but it's just the portion sizes I don't really agree with. So the food is okay, but it's the portion sizes you don't agree with. Well, if you are committed to losing weight, you might have some times where you feel a little bit hungry. That is what it is. You disagree with the portion sizes now, but eventually you'll get used to it. So I'm focused on eating healthier choices and not so much the amounts. D well, the amount matters too. You can overdo it on healthy food, absolutely. Audie says she's following Dr. Nile's meal plan, but her portion sizes are massive. She does make an effort to pair her giant- What do we got? Some chicken, some green beans. I can't really see what's going on here, but apparently it's from Dr. Nile's cookbook and she's just made an egregious amount of it. He's like, all right, now for healthy eating, we're gonna have some chicken breast, 
potato and some green beans and then she makes like 10 chicken breasts five potatoes and six pounds of green beans meals with a massive salad but the thick looking dressing isn't helping how much sugar is in that fat free dressing if i were trying to lose weight i would pay a lot of attention to the glycemic index of foods which refers to how slowly or quickly this food elevates your blood sugar levels low glycemic foods such as complex carbs cause a slow gradual blood sugar increase and decline while simple carbs cause a blood sugar spike and then subsequent crash that leaves you very tired. By completely cutting out sugar and avoiding simple carbs, we can manage our blood sugar levels, and this is one way that people use to lose weight. There are many different ideologies that we can use to get to the same point. Some chips. Yeah. How much do you want? I don't need you to dole me out. I don't need you to dole me out. Give me the whole bag. I would have said, you're right. I don't need to dole you out the chips. Uh, I'm going to take these chips and put them in the garbage can. I have cheated a little bit, but I've been doing all the other stuff on the diet. It doesn't matter if you've been doing all the other stuff. You can't outrun a bad diet. If you're sitting on the couch eating potato chips, it doesn't matter if you had a salad before that. A salad does not cancel out all the bad food that you ate. Some people love to delude themselves by thinking that if they eat something healthy, it cancels out one of the bad things that they ate, but that's not how it works at all. Eating a salad does not delete the calories that you just had from a double cheeseburger from a fast food establishment. Drinking a diet soda does not delete one of the unhealthy meal options that you had earlier. You're actually just having more calories. If you're following every other part of Dr. Now's meal plan, but you're throwing in all these extra potato chips every day, it's not going to work. And I feel like I'm making good progress. Even after multiple visits with Dr. Now, Dottie's food addiction is ruthless. And that's about all we have time for today. What was your favorite scene from today's show? Leave a comment below. My favorite scene was when she couldn't fit through that door and had to get out of the mobility scooter, stand up, turn sideways, and walk out. I know that it's embarrassing, but sometimes that level of embarrassment is the wake-up call that we need to change. Please click the like button. One like equals one mustache comment. Anyway, that about does it. Thanks for watching, commenting, liking, and subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one.